Hello everyone and welcome to QuickSafe TV, your number one source for Skyrim coverage on YouTube. The topic of today's discussion is gonna be the Witch Hunter class, the again imaginary class in Skyrim which in which follows the specific tactic in combat. He uses the bow, he or she is using the bow, and some magical schools to support the fighting style. Uh, witch hunters as such were well, personally for me, introduced in The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, that's the first time I've seen this class. Here I would like to evaluate on that, elaborate, and give some suggestions. This video idea was suggested by one of the subscribers. Alright, so the idea of the class is that witch hunters are recruited as local huntsmen, let's say, to support the... to, to purge, to kill the... Uh, unofficial, illegal mages, necromancers, witches, hags, whatever it is, right? So they're kind of um, uh, opportunistic fighters, which are not necessarily interested in gold and silver. But they usually save it from the hands of evil mages and witches. I mean, no point to leave it here, right? So why not to take it? So the idea of the class is to always have in your hands the best possible ranged weapon you can find when we're talking about the bow. Here I just put some examples of the bows. So we have like long bow, the weakest bow in the game, and we have the daedric bow, the strongest bow in the game. So the idea is whenever is a whenever you're able, just go ahead and find yourself the best possible bow in the game. Bow is your primarily means of attacking the enemy, and as the as the idea of the witch hunter. You shouldn't replace your bow ever, you should always aid it. Whenever you use some skills in order to support yourself, your combat style, you shouldn't switch to, for example, destruction magic. That's unwise, because you automatically choose something else, something that's not necessarily much more effective, because you don't use your bow anymore. There's no reason to do that. Okay, perfect. So, the idea of the Witch Hunter, <coughs> as such, is to use ranged weaponry as bows, right, the best possible always, and to support it with spells. So, okay, let me just check my notes what I have more for you. Spell with, okay. In general, spells with long duration effect, and, and spells as such with duration effect, are much more effective than the normal spells, right? So right here I have the spells Close Wounds and the Conjure Flame Atronach. Flame Atronach would be a very nice supportive spell for you as it summons the familiar to your aid. And as you pummel the enemy with your bow, you will be able to have this additional support, additional DPS, and most of the enemies will probably focus on your Atronach instead of fighting with you. Which is actually very wise, because, you know, for 60 seconds you will have the companion. So in general, spells are of the schools such as Alteration, Destruction, and Illusion are not suggested, because of their nature. Alteration spells are usually increase your armor, which is not necessarily the most important thing in the world, allow you to see through walls, again, not necessarily the most important thing in the world. Destruction spells, as such, they replace your bow, because you cannot have a bow and at the same time some destruction spells, so you should use your bow instead. Don't use the even, you know, the strongest destruction spells, because as you progress in your archery tree, let me just go ahead and find it, in your archery tree, you will be able to have powerful spells such as Power Shot with 50% chance to stagger the enemy and the Bullseye, 15% chance to paralyze the target. So the idea behind this ones are to be, to shoot as fast as possible, to have these passives as fast as possible applying. That is why, then another idea, that is why I do not suggest you that is why I do not suggest you to you to enchant your bows, because there is one really, really powerful shout called Elemental Fury. What does it do? It makes your weapon fire at much greater speed. It's especially noticeable when you use daggers or sword, but it's also noticeable with the bow. So won't happen in your way. Yeah. Okay. So the idea is to always reinforce your fighting style. You don't necessarily need to replace it. Instead, you should reinforce it. So let me just go ahead and pick up the rest of the bow, equip the best possible bow. Now the idea of the equipment, the armor. Well, classically, you should use the light armor, right? That's the idea. Here I have some dragon scale armor, but that's not necessarily that's not necessarily the perfect solution for you as you could use something more effective, like heavy armor. But why do we use light armor? Well, that is because the light armor is less perk intensive. Light armor is very, very cheap on perks. Just check it out. Only this amount of perks. Much less than the heavy armor. And the heavy armor gets into this crazy deviation. Both of w them are somehow necessary. 
and it's really hard to get both of them be because you need to go completely opposite directions. Whereas in the light armor, you can ignore some of the skills, and you know, and you won't, you will be in a great shape, much cheaper, much better. That's the idea. That's the reason behind taking light armor. But if you're able and you have the perks, you should count it. The ma the maximum level in the game is 81. Okay, so you're gonna get about 80 perks. 80, I think it's correct. Since you start on level one, 80 perks. So the idea is to count these 80 perks that you have enough for everything, for all your specific specialization. Now, perfect. Focus on your archery. As I said, don't replace bow with magic. Mm -hmm. Stock on your quiver. Okay, so since you don't really need anything else for your bow, you should actually stockpile on your quiver, on your arrows, as much as you can. Always, whenever it is possible, buy the arrows for your quiver. Just stockpile the arrows. Like, for example, if you don't have enough of some arrows, don't throw them away. Just, for example, stockpile the ebony arrows until you have, like, a lot of them, and just use them. It is very money-intensive, but, you know, there's nothing really much to spend the money on. Now, about the upgrading the weaponry. Let's talk about enchantments and the weaponry as such. Okay, it's first the armor enchantments. I have made some... I have made some thought for this enchantments. I think you will going to like them. I enchanted the light armor plus 25 points and magic regeneration faster on the armor, resistances on the boots, 40% uh, damage from bows and 25 of light armor on the gauntlets, and for a helmet 40% 40, 40 more damage for the bow and magic 62 points. Now look at this. The bow basic damage is 254 now with this upgrades. Let's just take them off now and now we have... where are you? Now we have 141. Look at this dramatic change. Look how can you enchant your armor effectively to support your fighting style. Now all of a sudden, I don't really need the magic all that much anymore because I smash everything with the bow. Even the ancient dragons on the master's difficulty get in damaged enough to justify this. All right. So, yeah, as I said, magic should be used as a supportive, not the primary idea. The best schools of magic are restoration and conjuration for the witch hunter because of their nature i think it's very very good spells so we have the healing spells and we have the uh, summon spells very strong the secondary which you should not really focus on and shouldn't really use alteration distraction and illusion perfect the stone i suggest for the witch hunter is the lover stone because it gives plus 15 percent to speed of improvement for all skills speed skills yeah speed skills <laughs> If you cannot, or you didn't find it yet, go ahead and use plus 20% from the Thief or Mage. Preferably the one you have more troubles with, uh, probably the Mage, because you're going to use both more. So in general, in general, all in all, Witch Hunter is the archetype, has the archetype between the Thief and the Mage with the shift to the Thief and is very effective in what he does. For potions, you should use just healing potions whenever it's necessary, but it's not going to be really necessary because Witch Hunter is very effective in combat as such. You're not going to need a lot of... Be careful, be careful. You know what? Screw you! I'm giving a tutorial right now. What? None of your business what I'm doing here. Perfect. Now that we had a little discussion with the Stormcloak soldiers, which are going to be really pissed with me. Okay, good luck with that. Don't forget, that's the master's difficulty. Notice how the soldiers fall apart from two hits because of the enchantments put on the bow. Also notice how not careful I am with firing my arrows. So yeah, that's the general idea for the witch hunter. You shouldn't turn on your people. It's just, you know, the note for you. Unless they piss you off really much, like in my case. So that would be the it for the tutorial for the Witch Hunter. If you have any additional questions, please go ahead and ask them. I think I gave the uh, breakdown of the class as such. It should help anyone to start with it and to understand perhaps better how to use your own enchantments and everything. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for joining. I hope you enjoyed the video, enjoyed the commentary. If you did, go ahead, like, subscribe, share with your friends and favorite. It, all of these things help me very much and make me a really, really happy person. <laughs> really, really happy panda. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more content about Skyrim and have a great day.